Yeah, so that was a really nice introduction, but mostly I'm going to show a lot of pretty pictures. So this is going to be, I hope you'll find this uh, interesting. Uh, like, like Julie said, my name's Nancy. I work here at the Applied Physics Lab, and, um, and I'm going to share today some of uh, one year of images from Messenger, um, Messenger being the first spacecraft to ever orbit Mercury. So it's a really exciting time. Uh, so just a little background so you put this into perspective. Uh, Mariner 10 was the first Mercury mission and it was launched in 1973 and it had three encounters with Mercury in the 70s. Um, so that all happened and that was great. And Mar but Mariner 10 was the only mission to Mercury until Messenger. So there, there hasn't been a, a lot. And this is, you know, Mariner 10 showed us the first look of Mercury, which was very, very exciting. But this is what it looked like if, up until the 70s, up until Messenger. This was our knowledge of the surface of the planet of Mercury. Um, and you can see that more than half of the planet is blank on the map here. We actually, um, Mariner 10 only saw 45% of the planet. So obviously we still had a lot to learn about the planet Mercury up until the Messenger mission. To me, this is kind of amazing. I remember uh, I had a globe when I was in grad school of Mercury, and you could look at one side of it, and it looked pretty nice, you know, kind of nice. It had that weird kind of gore up there that you were missing part. And then you turned it over to the other side, and it was like gray. There was like nothing there. Uh, you know, and, uh, and Mercury is so close to the Earth. It's, it's really kind of intriguing that we so know so little about a planet that's so close to us. So, um, so I don't think it takes a whole lot to justify the messenger mission to go see what the other side of Mercury looks like and to understand this planet that's you know so near to Earth in the solar system. Um, so messenger was launched in uh, 2004. And uh, not only was it going to fly by Mercury, but it was going to be the first Mercury orbiter ever. And that's what uh, that's the stage that we're in now. So it had. Uh, I'm going to talk about the imaging a lot, but it has lots of uh, other instruments and lots of goals to really fully characterize uh, characterize Mercury. Um, uh, this is kind of one of my favorite things about the mission, so I always like to show it, because it's really not easy to become the first spacecraft to ever orbit Mercury. It's a little easier if you just want to kind of go and fly by, but as you imagine, you go, you fly by, you take a look, and then it's, it's gone. You see what you see. You know, in orbit, we can look over and over and over again. Um, but in order for Messenger to do that, it uh, took more than six years. It had six planetary flybys, and it's traveled more than 4.7 billion miles in order to accomplish this. Um, this shows you the trajectory, but it's kind of more fun to watch the movie. So I think that this should play automatically. All right. Oh, so now we're off. So we left Earth. See, there's Messenger, and it's going to fly by Earth. Uh, Earth fly by one. So we flew by Earth once. Um, we're going to fly by Venus twice. So here we come, here we come. Oh, Venus fly by one. Great. So we're still going. No, going, going, going. Oh, Venus fly by two. OK, we're getting closer to Mercury. Going closer to Mercury. Mercury fly by one. Uh, Okay, if we're still waiting for orbit sometime. Mercury fly by two. Okay, good, good. Getting closer, getting closer. Um, you know, but you can see Mercury fly by three. And now still, still this all happened. That happened in 2009. And it wasn't until 2011 that Messenger actually made it into orbit about Mercury. And there you go. There's the, that's all that happened. So, um, you know, this is remarkable. Um, you know, and this is one of the things that made it so difficult to get an, or a spacecraft to orbit Mercury, because you had to come up with this solution in order to make it possible, you know, using all these gravity assists. So it's really remarkable, but it's worked, um, worked fabulously. Um, so this is what the map looked like in 2009, because we did have three Mercury flybys, and we took images as we went along, kind of look at Mercury, and then like go over to the side, you know. And we were able to fill in a lot of the the planet, you know. So this looked pretty good, um, you know. And, I, and we were really excited about this. I was super excited about it. And uh, but it, I started getting weird comments like, "Well, now you've seen Mercury, so we don't need to go into orbit, do we?" Um, which was which was kind of weird, um, but. Uh, this, I like to show this example. So this is a view from that 2009 map where maybe we had more than 90% of the planet seen. This is what it looked like. You know, you go, okay, well, that's better than gray. You know, so the globe looks a little better than it used to. This is what we're seeing from orbit. Okay, so really, it's like night and day. You know, when you're just flying by, you, you, can, you can do a lot. But really, here in orbit, we're able to get a level of data and imaging data in particular that just was not possible from, from the flyby. So um, this has been a really exciting time where even things that technically we had seen from spacecraft before, we're kind of seeing for the first time with this, with this data. Um, and another thing, too, that's to stress here is just because you've seen something once doesn't mean that you shouldn't look again. So this is actually showing the same part of the surface of Mercury, really. Both of these images are of the same surface of Mercury. The easiest thing to do is kind of match up the craters 
if you will. You can kind of match up a few of the craters, and you can get it in your head that they're the same surface of Mercury. But you can see one where the sun is overhead for the Mariner 10 view. You can see that beautiful rayed crater up in the top, and it's like sending rays out all over that. But you don't really see this big, giant basin that's so clear on the Messenger one, where you've got that double ring basin right there with the low lighting conditions. So that really brings out the topography. So it really shows you the power of uh, you know seeing things under different lighting conditions, which you know of course is interesting from an art point of view too. Which for this workshop, you know, where you really can see the same surface with different lighting conditions, and it really brings out different different features. Important for understanding Mercury's geology. Um, right. So this is kind of you know what we've been doing now. Um, I say one year of orbital operations, but it's not quite. It's almost almost there. So uh, March 18th will actually be the one year anniversary since uh, Messenger went into orbit uh, about Mercury. So. Um, so that's really exciting. And this is kind of just, uh, you know, time's been sped up and slowed down, just giving you an idea of kind of what, what the spacecraft's doing. It's taking images of the surface that's the laser altimeter firing in pink, getting the topography. Um, and we're about to end the primary mission for MESSENGER, but NASA has agreed to fund for another one-year extended mission. So we're about to start our one-year extended mission on March 18th. So and we'll be doing a whole bunch of new imaging campaigns. Oh, see, this was an old movie. So that was part of the planet that had never been seen before that we were imaging for the first time, hence the nice gray featureless color. So, uh, <laughs> um, right, so let's see, back. Right, so things that we've achieved in one year, because this was the prime mission, and uh, now we've seen 99%, more than 99% of Mercury's surface in what we call the global morphology base map. And that's kind of the resolution that I showed you there, comparing the flyby and the orbit data. So we've seen, you know, over 99% of the planet at that kind of degree now. It's really, it's exciting to go into work every day and see these new images come down. Um, we've also uh, mapped Mercury in color, um, and uh, we've done that for 99% of the planet as well. So, so that's a... Uh, that's pretty exciting. I just wanted to take a second to say something about what does color mean, because color is always very interesting, I think, especially for a lot of things in planetary science. If you look, we can make these beautiful color products like you see here for Mercury. Uh, I promise you that Mercury, though, if you could like look at it, is not blue and yellow and orange. <laughs> um, but this is what Mercury actually looks like in true color, if you will, shown over on the um, left side of the of the image. So that's kind of what Mercury looks like in true color, where this is actually a color image. This is not a black and white image. We've taken images that were taken in a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter. We've put them together and made that image, and that's what Mercury kind of looks like. But we take images in a lot of different color filters, and by combining those in different ways, taking ratios, figuring out which one's important, doing some math on that sort of uh, image analysis, you can accentuate the real geology differences of the thing. So we don't just do this just to make a pretty color picture, but all of a sudden you can see features really snap out that you know you weren't aware of before that were maybe a little more subtle. So we try to get chemical information about the surface this way. So um, we call this enhanced color. There's some people who don't like the term false color, so we've usually been calling it enhanced color because it's not really false. We didn't make it up. We didn't just take Photoshop and like draw random colors in there. This is actually based on real data of the surface, you know, but it's not what Mercury looks like. Um, right, so to date, Messenger has acquired more than 86,000 images from orbit. And uh, I thought that I'd take the rest of this time to kind of just uh, share some of my personal favorites, because that's as good a way as any to, to go through and uh, show you all of the great things we've been learning about Mercury. So I have to start with this one, because this might still be my personal favorite one. This is the first um, image that was ever obtained from Mercury orbit. So uh, we were sitting around waiting, waiting, and it, it's a tense time because, uh, you know, I've, we've all put a lot of time into it, but as the instrument scientist for the camera in particular, um, you do all the planning you can, right? But you, do, you feel a lot better when that first image comes down and it looks good, you know, and especially when the press people are like, oh, wait, we're ready to go, you know, and they're going to put print it in the newspapers and things like that. When the first one came back down, it was so relieved, and it was a gorgeous image. It's kind of showing you about from the South Pole, um, not quite, a little bit less than the equator, and you can see um, there's a really nice raid crater, um, Debussy, Debussy? Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, craters on Mercury are interesting because they're named for people who have contributed to the humanities. So there's a lot of artists and uh, writers and things for, for the craters. So that makes it a really accessible kind of planet as well. And, uh, and the, you can see it's a beautiful raid craters. Um, a raid crater um, usually indicates that it was pretty young. 
by pretty young, I mean like maybe a billion years old, but um, because it's kind of sending its ejecta, its rays over the rest of the surface. So you can see that it formed more recently than the rest of the surface. Oh, this is another, uh, another one that I, I like quite a lot. Um, we call this Blue Tongue Crater. It will get an official name sometime, <laughs> named after a famous artist or something like that. But it's one of the first uh, really cool, high-resolution, color-targeted images that we got from orbit. So uh, we uh, put this color together, and we were really just, we could tell kind of from the black and white filters that it looked interesting. But when you made the color composite, that dark impact melt that looks fairly blue in this seems to be flowing out of the crater. And uh, you know, this is a nice example of using color to really accentuate the different geologic features. You've got the rays and, and white indicating it's a relatively young crater, but then also this nice blue tongue of impact melt flowing out. This is a, a nice image that uh, one of the things we've learned about Mercury from seeing all of the, the data is that the whole northern part of the polar region is practically composed of volcanic plains. And now by immense volcanic plains, I mean it's like five million square kilometers of volcanic plains just spread out over the whole surface. And this is the edge of one of them. So this is another example of how you can use color in order to determine the geology. The yellow area is actually that area of smooth plains where volcanism and lava have flooded over the surface. And if you look at that area, you can see it's less cratered than the part that's shown there in blue. You know, this is a younger surface um, that, that's coated there. And that shows that volcanism was really prevalent on Mercury, one of the things that we're learning from the MESSENGER mission. And the blue area is kind of the edge of where the plains flowed out to in this picture. Um, I'm always a sucker for these ones that show Mercury against the darkness of space. I just uh, think they look, uh, look gorgeous and really kind of give you a different perspective on you know, looking at a planet rather than just a little detail on the surface. And what you can see in particular in this image, so again, this is a, a color composite image, but you can see that there's a lot of uh, white rays that extend down across the image. And this is from a crater that's not in the scene, but it's able to ascend to the ejecta nearly halfway around the planet just from one impact crater. So that's, a, that's pretty remarkable. And again, this is just a different view because uh, the spacecraft is uh, orbiting Mercury in this uh, really highly elliptical orbit. Sometimes you have to kind of look off to the side a little bit to see part of this. So this is something where the spacecraft had to actually, you know, look at a, a slightly different angle than just straight down, you know, had to look a little bit over to the side in order to see that part of the train. But it also gives an interesting perspective rather than just looking straight down at the planet where you can start to see the topography and the lighting is such that it really brings out and what this is, again, you can see the foreground has a lot of rougher surface, more craters. Things that have more craters have been around for longer. This is an older surface than the surface that you're looking towards, towards the horizon there, where it's a more smooth, a younger surface. So this is one of the ways we're trying to get the relative ages on Mercury from information like this. Um, Degas crater, again, this is another high resolution uh, color image that we took. I put the Mariner 10 one up there Again, for another nice example of th even things that we've seen before, technically we're, we're seeing in a new way that we've never before. Because that's what that's the best resolution for Mariner 10. I didn't just take it and like shrink it down or anything. That's the most detail that you can see. And now all of a sudden we can see that there's you know different uh, light material on the floor, and there's also cracks on the floor of the crater in, from you know a material that had flooded it and cooled at one point. And Mercury's hollows. So this has been uh, something that you know Dave works on a lot for those who are here at APL and got to talk to got to talk to Dave. Um, this was a very very surprising discovery for Mercury. Uh, these are these little features, and they look as if material has kind of left the surface. Like there was something there, and it either sublimated or or went away, like it was a volatile type material. Um, what's so surprising? is that you have to look, they're pretty small features, like this whole thing is 20 kilometers tall. And with the previous resolution that we had from Mariner 10 or from the flybys, we had no clue that this sort of landform even existed. And we don't see this landform on Earth or 
Mars or any other planet, really. So it's pretty much like Messenger has discovered a whole new type of geologic landform. Uh, it's extra surprising on Mercury, actually, because there was a lot of theories about what Mercury was like before we went there. There's, you can make all sorts of theories if you've only seen 45% of the planet. I mean, you don't know very much about it, right? Um, but one of them was basically like Mercury doesn't have a lot of volatiles. This planet's close to the sun. It you know, looks like it doesn't, you know, that it's got this big giant iron core. It's not going to have volatile material that's going to disappear from the surface. But that seems to be the best explanation for these. Uh, you know, the jury's still out. These images are less than a year old. You know, there's people are going to work on this for years to try to figure out really what's going on for Mercury. Uh, this is a, a nice Terminator shot. Actually, uh, one of our summer interns put this image together, and, uh, and uh, I quite like it. Um, the Terminator is just that separates the day side from the night side, so where you have sun and when you have night. And in that region where you have just that low grazing sunlight, you can really make out the topography of the surface. Uh, shadowed craters at Mercury South Pole. This is an image that I put together related to the research that I've been doing with the images. And, what it shows you is uh, this is a view of the South Pole, and the big crater in the middle is uh, Chao Meng Fu. And uh, the colors here mean the amount of sunlight that something receives. So we've looked at this part of the planet repeatedly for one Mercury solar day. And uh, if things look black on there, that means that that part of the planet never sees any sunlight. So that's kind of fun. We're mapping out the areas that are in permanent shadow. And you can see there's quite a lot of area that's in permanent shadow near Mercury's south pole. And we think that water ice might actually be stable and present in these polar regions of Mercury in these shadowed areas. So that's kind of fun, too, when the planet that's closest to the sun might have actually water ice at its poles. Uh, this image, I think, is spectacular, where you can look out at the horizon in this, uh, in this great view. I, it also has an interesting story in that we took this image totally by accident. I guess maybe that's not something you're supposed to admit if you know, you're in charge of planning the images. But it is actually something that happened by accident. Uh, they had to change the pointing of the spacecraft at the last minute. And it made more sense just to leave the images that we had planned in to look straight down at the surface and you know, see what would happen. And this is what happened. You know, and it was like, they actually have this whole strip that goes along. You know, you know, but it's great for like actually feeling like, you know, Mercury is another planet. You know, this is not really so different than Earth in some ways, you know, and really we need to understand all of the planets in our solar system to better understand our place in them. Uh, Kuiper crater, a uh, very, very bright crater on Mercury. A uh, nice color composite doesn't just show you the bright rays, but also shows you it's got this weird sort of reddish ejecta material that's, that's come out from it. Uh, and uh, I think this is the the last one that I have, actually, uh, we take these pictures of Mercury's limb for uh, to do some geophysics kind of uh, shape of Mercury investigations. But I like these when they come down and I get to see them each week because it really just is a stark, beautiful image to me of the crescent of Mercury. And I just wanted to finish by uh, pointing out that uh, you should visit the Messenger website and find your own personal favorites because uh, we have taken over 86,000 images to date from orbit. And we actually post a new one every single day. So you can go on there and you can get the latest and greatest image that's coming down from Mercury and make that your personal favorite and check out what's going on. Um, and also, just on Thursday, um, we released a new global mosaic. And using that quick map link, you can go into it and you can uh, click around, zoom in and out, and you know get screenshots or download the whole mosaic and, and do whatever you want with it. So it's uh, it's got a lot of different views. So I really encourage you to to go and you know find your favorite images of Mercury. And uh, we still have a, a long way to go, a whole other year of extended missions, and hopefully um, more extended mission after that. So, thank you.